So I had someone that wanted me to do a video about um, which state, compare the two states between Colorado and Washington, right? Because I think, and I did a video about this. I thought I uploaded it, but I guess I didn't. Um, and so I'm going to do this because I never lived in Colorado. Okay, I never, I never actually lived there. But I did visit Denver one time and it made a massive impression on me. So I know more about Washington State and more specifically Western Washington than I do about Colorado. So that's the very first thing. But this person wanted to know which one was a better place overall because I've done that before talking about different cities Portland Tacoma Seattle which one's better etc cetera, etc cetera, based on my own opinion <clears throat> and a lot of folks like those videos because it kind of gives them a viewpoint and not just a, a bias a heavy bias because I'm born there right I think a lot of times people who are born in an area may give you more uh, more of a biased view right not always, but typically. So to be honest with you, I Colorado wins in many categories. However, I still like living here in Tacoma or Seattle versus Colorado. And more specifically, let's talk about Denver. And I'll go into the details of why I feel the way that I do. Be sure to join the Discord down in the description box below. Also, be sure to subscribe as well, right? Give it a thumbs up or thumbs down, whatever you want to do. First off, talk about Colorado. Colorado has a lot of benefits, right? If you're someone who's into the nightlife, Colorado is going to win every, or let's say Denver. Denver is going to win over Seattle any day of the week because Seattle does not really have a nightlife scene, right? People say it does, but again, if you've been to other places, you can tell it's not, it's not that deep compared to other cities of similar size. So when you look at Denver, they have more nightclubs and things like that than, uh, Seattle does right here is more of a bar people like their bars you don't have a lot of nightclubs there are some but not like what you see in mass like you do in other places like a Denver or if you even if you put in another city like Indianapolis people clown it and say Indianapolis would not have a whole lot of good nightlife but if you look at just Broad Ripple Broad Ripple has by far more nightclubs and spots to hang out at than all of Seattle. It just It's just here, it's not something that is celebrated. I think folks here get frightened over, you know, people drinking and the, the fear of, you know, a bar or a nightclub or actually a nightclub. They are afraid that it's going to attract certain types of people or it's going to be fighting. Other places don't even pay attention to that as much, right? <clears throat> so I'd say Denver wins in the night, you know, having a nightlife more so than Seattle. When it comes to transportation, I also have to give that to Denver. If you look at Denver's light rail system, I think it's the RTD, I think, not for sure. But that is similar to Portland where it's an above ground light rail system and it covers a big portion of Denver. You really and truly can do without a car more so there than you can here in Seattle, right? Um, and yes, it's not as hoity-toity or as, you know, world-class, if you will, as what Seattle's trying to do, but it gets the job done. It's very functional, obviously, right? So they're much farther ahead. They're, they, you know, hours has taken decades to get done and they're, moving along pretty quickly. It doesn't take decades to build a light rail system only here in Seattle. And Sound Transit has done a horrible job. I don't care what people say. People talk about, well, it's an earthquake zone. So is San Francisco. They build BART, expand that all the time. And it's a heavy rail subway system. So there's no reason why Seattle, and I get it, we're in a different area than <clears throat> San Francisco. I get it. But, I mean, they're also on a peninsula. It doesn't make sense that it takes as long as it does. 
It's just these are facts. Uh, a lot of this, and there was even an audit saying that most of Sound Transit's problem is the fact that they uh, are doing all these different uh, studies and they're asking people their opinion. And what about this station? What about that? And they have all these different 10, 15 different meetings, meeting with the public about a design that really people don't have much of a choice. You're given a design choice of A, B, and C. So, <laughs> I mean... People may say, you know what, just give us a basic station like what they have in Portland or what they have in Denver and be done with it versus building these big, giant Taj Mahal type structures. So anyhow, it, it's that type of thing. And then the way that they construct things, it's a very long process. So people are getting tired of waiting for a whole lifetime just to get something basic done. It is basic. Sorry. And, and people say, well, you don't have that type of experience. They have experience in Japan. And they build high speed rail faster. They Every place builds it faster than <clears throat> in the U.S. in general, even in Europe. And some places have very high standards. It's not like people say, well, we have property rights and we have high standards. We have this other places do, too. You know, Pierce Transit, or not Pierce Transit, but Sound Transit could start construction at night, work through the nighttime to get it done. And they were like, it costs a whole lot more money. It's going to cost more money if you delay, especially in this area, if you delay it a few years by building in Everett. By the time they get to Everett, they're going to be asking for much more money than they're asking now. It's already money. There's a shortfall. They're going to keep asking for more money. But by the time you finally build up there to Everett, which by far deserves it. It's going to cost much more because building expenses cost more every single year. So it's worth it working throughout the night, working 24-7 on this project so that you can get it done faster than what you're doing now. But I digress. It's not what this video is about. When it comes to <clears throat> the cost of living, it is expensive. I mean, again, once you get over in the mountain states and western states, Homes are pricey, but homes are more affordable in Denver than they are in Seattle. So again, if you're looking from an affordability standpoint, Denver wins over Seattle. When we're talking about jobs, both are heavyweights, to be honest with you. Um, but this is where Seattle edges out Denver, in my opinion. We have a lot of big, big companies. Boeing, for example, uh, Microsoft. Uh, Expedia.com, uh, Big Fish, the gaming company. We have uh, Amazon, Starbucks, Nordstrom, all of their corporate headquarters, and many, many more are here. It's a juggernaut. <clears throat> so at that point, Denver, while it has a great job base, is out of its league when it compares it to Seattle. There's a lot of cities. Even when you're looking at Los Angeles, is out of its league when it comes to tech jobs that Seattle has. Which, these are facts. So you're the big leagues. I do have to give it to Seattle. It's big leagues when you're talking about techno, you know, technology jobs. Excuse me. <clears throat> There's a lot of cities that can't hold to it. Cities like San Francisco, San Jose, they can. There's others. New York City, they can. But very few can reach that caliber. So that gives Seattle that extra edge if that's the industry that you are in. When it comes to the overall job market here is, I don't know about the job market necessarily in Denver, so I have to back off of that. I do know about the tech side of things. They have tech, but not like what it is here. <clears throat> Jobs here are very plentiful. And that is the reason why we have such a massive influx of people. If you took away Amazon, for example, which is a big, it has a big basket of, of jobs. If you took them away, you still have a tremendous amount of jobs in everything from manufacturing to logistics to everything. It's a, it's, there's a lot of jobs here, a lot of jobs. So that probably the number, the sheer number, because again, when you're looking at it pound for pound, I think that Seattle will probably edge out Denver, especially if we're talking about the, the pay, <clears throat> job pay. The job pay here is going to be greater than it is in Denver. 
looking at the same jobs. It may not be massively different, but it's going to be different. So again, if you're looking at the number of jobs, Seattle. If you're looking at the job pay, Seattle. Uh, so there it kind of wins. If we're looking at outdoors, this might surprise you. <clears throat> Denver has better weather. Now, yes, I get it snows a ton. It snows. But that also adds to the lure because you have Aspen and all these other places where you can go and it's it's like boutique skiing almost. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they have snow that's different. So if you're an outdoorsy type of person, Denver's going to win because you have all types of nature trails and places where you can ski, uh, where you can go to the mountain. The Rocky Mountains are impressive. Yes, we have Mount Rainier. I get it. And you can ski up there, but that's Mount Rainier. <clears throat> the Rockies, you have a whole lot of different places and there's Baylor, there's all these places you can go to. So I would say that, yeah, when it comes to nature, when it comes to nature, Denver holds pretty firm. But again, here we also have water. Now that's where you kind of blunt, in my opinion, Colorado, we have water. So it's easy to go and see orcas, for example. That's kind of something we're known for. You know, you can you can do all types of fishing here, right? So when you look at it from that standpoint and the massive, we have the, in Tacoma, Point Defiance is the second largest public park, natural park, outside of New York Central's park. That edges us, in my opinion, beyond what you're going to have in Denver. But again, I mean, that's using the some of, of what Tacoma has, but I also use some of what Aspen has also in Colorado's view. But I think here it kind of edges it out because we're able to do more things than what you have up in Denver. When it comes to quality of life, that's a tough one because I haven't lived up in Denver to be able to give you that type of... of experience. So that I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. I know that for some people, the snow is one of those things that they hate because it gets pretty bad. Um, and here we don't really get a lot of snow. Most of what you see in terms of snow is either a dusting. Sometimes it gets crazy and we get like a foot. And we're like, whoa. But it's rare. It's a rare thing unless, you know, the climate's all over the place. So it may not be as rare in the future, but it's not as common as what you're going to see up in Denver. So some people like the fact that we don't get those big, massive, heavy amounts of snow. And when we do get some snow, it's usually in February, right? It's usually in February. Uh, we do have a long period. Like right now, you have the hit and, hit and miss days of where, you know, starting around... I don't know, middle of August, the weather starts to shift. It goes from being hot to where it gets cold at night. Next day, hot in the day, very cold at night. And then slowly that hot temperature starts to dip down a little bit and it, the cold stays, it stands in terms of it doesn't get colder. It's usually in the 50s, it stays in the 60s down to the 50s. And so slowly the, the temps in the 70s start to go down and then they meet. And so then you have days of where it's the whole, it's the same. Around this time, middle of September, you're gonna it's gonna be windy, just gust of wind. Typically, you're gonna have hit and miss of days of where it's cloudy and sunny. Um, you know, some days it may just be an hour total of where it's just uh, sunny, right? Um, so for some people, it's difficult to deal with. This is prior to the rain, which it's been raining a little bit. It hasn't really did its typical rain yet. This is not quite the time. It's getting there. Because the, the clouds are changing everything. And then you get the dark skies. It looks like it's dark out, basically. And then you get the steady rain, right? And it's not like a heavy downpour or anything like that. It's kind of like a misty type of rain. You may get some drops that come down pretty heavy. Down here is more heavier rain than what you're going to have up in Seattle, for example. And it's all due to our mountains. Um, and how they lay out. The Cascade Mountains really affect the weather here. That's why we don't get a huge amount of snow and we don't get a lot of rain. I mean, we get a lot of rain, but it's not the heavy, heavy, heavy stuff that you see like in 
Kentucky or Indiana. So it depends. Now, Colorado, I'm not sure about what their weather is like in terms of that. But generally, because we don't have those paralyzing snows, a lot of people choose here because of that, right? So I lay this out to say that there's a lot of equals and there's a lot of differences. Colorado wins in a lot of areas because it just is a city that really has to rely on itself. Seattle was never intended to be a big city like that. I don't know about Denver, but Seattle was never really intended for that. In fact, if anything, Tacoma was going to be the key city of Washington. I mean, this is where the railroad ended and all that. And, you know, the seaport and all of that. The, the, the infrastructure was there. And then Seattle became what it is. But it was never intended to be the size that it is. Denver, I think, has done a better job at preparing for growth than Seattle has and this region has. I think Denver has done a whole lot better. Um, but Denver also has sprawl more so than what we have here we don't we can't really sprawl out much where everything has to be built up because we just don't have any more area to actually expand into like what you have over in denver or in colorado so yeah i mean it depends it depends on the type of person that you are i wouldn't be sad living in either place to be honest with you there are other places that are no go i wouldn't even consider denver i wouldn't have a problem with actually in fact we had considered denver as an option san diego was number one for us up along the coast, anywhere along the coast was number two. We had even considered Portland. Seattle was the top notch. So was San Diego. They were top notches for us. We knew San Francisco wasn't going to happen. Too expensive and my ex lives there. So, excuse me, didn't want that. And Denver, because we had visited and we loved it. But if it comes down to it, which one would I choose? I would still have to choose Seattle, Tacoma area over Denver. Um, and it's not saying anything bad about Denver. I can't think of it. There's places I can talk about. Denver, I can't. I really can't. I mean, it's a really great place. And now again, that's from someone who visited. Someone who lives there can probably give a little bit better analysis. But for me, if I'm looking at everything overall, and people will talk about homelessness. Well, the homelessness situation. Every place has bad a bad homeless situation. I don't even want to hear it. There, are, Even Olympia has a bad homeless situation. It's a small town, right? <clears throat> so if we're going on that, yeah. I mean, the West is kind of a transient area where you have a lot of that. Albuquerque, New Mexico. <clears throat> the first time I ever seen a bunch of people sleeping on the sidewalk was in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I never seen that in Indianapolis, which is by far bigger. Never, ever saw that. Denver, you see a lot of homeless people, right? Seattle, you see a lot of that. That's very common. So... If people want to go down that rabbit hole, I can point out a lot of places that are like that. I don't I don't consider that as being a, a, a factor of not considering one or the other. They both have those issues. But really and truly, I, if it were me, I think if we're looking at Skyline, I think Seattle's Skyline is more iconic. And I think that it does, it's a better looking Skyline than Denver's. Nothing bad about their Skyline. I think that they have a lot of attractive, cool buildings. I'm a Skyline type of guy. But I think that Seattle just knocks them out of the book. There's very few cities, in my opinion, in America that can compete with Seattle skyline. It just there's there's very few. New York City, Chicago, they come to mind. But other than that, Boston, other than that, it's kind of hit Philadelphia. They do. They have a very unique, beautiful, impressive skyline. But Seattle, to me. I love the skyline, especially nowadays, the way that there's buildings that are just, it's the most densest, not counting New York or Chicago. The skyline is so dense here in Seattle, even more so than San Francisco. It's just so darn dense. And that gives it that impression that it's a foreign city. It makes you, makes me feel like it's a very, very many, many, many Hong Kong. Hong Kong buildings are just like, I mean, like just all together. It's impressive. And so it's kind of similar here in a very small scale, like when we're looking at Seattle. It's just a very unique skyline. But anyhow, that's my opinion. Folks who have different, different opinions, definitely put it down in the description box below. There's some things I'm sure I've missed, obviously. Uh, be sure to join the Discord down in the description box below. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and comment. And until next time, I will see you. Take care.